And we talk generally about how the main, one of the main problems in marriage is finances. So I want you to address that from a financial point because it seems like, especially for Bodo Ibo marriages, when we come here, people start making money. There's a big problem. How should young people who are getting married, how should they navigate these things when it comes to money so that it doesn't become a problem in their marriage? Using your own experience, you know, should there be a, should there be joint finances? Should they do together? Or should they be 50-50? I mean, what, what is your advice? Okay, uh, and DB, thanks. Uh, what I would have to say, uh, by God's grace, uh, October 10th this year will be our, our 25th wedding. Wow. So 25th? We're, we're at Bali for 25 years. Right, Patrick, yours is 20 something as well. Is yes. it 20, 20, 20, how many 20, years? 21. 21, okay. So, uh, I think uh, to some extent, I think I'm qualified to speak about marriage. Very, very overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm going to speak from my personal perspective, what has worked for me. And what I'm going to say is, first and foremost, is before the issue of uh, finance, I see finance as, as the symptoms. Finance issues are symptoms. They are not the root causes of marriage issues. Okay. The first is, what's the foundation of your marriage? Hmm. For every structure that we stand, foundation is very key. Absolutely. So foundation is driven by purpose. Hmm. Marriage is mystical. Marriage is spiritual. Marriage was is the only institution that was ordained by God. Hmm. And that is why God likened marriage to Christ and the church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the only classical example God could give about marriage was to liken marriage to Christ and the church. Benny. Good. So marriage is about what you will see. Marriage is about faith. When two people come together, something will shift. Hmm. The state you met yourself will definitely shift. It can either be for the best or for the worst. So when you are getting married to somebody and you are marrying that person on the basis of what you are seeing now, there's something is wrong. The foundation is wrong ab initial. Because what you meet will certainly shift. When I got married to my wife, October 10th, 1998, it was nine months after my national youth service call. You still remember the dates after 25 years. Only a few men remember the dates they got married. October. That's how intentional you are, Brian. Ernest. <laughs> Nine months after my national youth service call, I had no job, no career. So my wife took a leap of faith. So she mm. married me for the future, not what she was seeing, because what she was seeing was nothing. Amen. And that is the foundation of marriage. Why are two people coming together? Hmm. So we started this journey on Grand Zero. Hmm. In fact, we were living in a two-bedroom apartment, which hmm. I could take into a room and parlor because the, the, the square feet was not up to a two-bedroom, but it was configured to be a two-bedroom. Hmm. And we had nothing. When I say nothing, I mean nothing. Hmm. Not a TV set. I didn't even have a, a tabletop or a gas burner, nothing. The only thing I had when I got married was my bed. In fact, interestingly, when the carpenter, the furniture guy, did my bed, it was a four by six bed. When he brought the bed, something fundamentally went wrong. You know what, Atibi? Mm -mm. The bed could not size the room, it came too big. <laughs> it's how you remember these details, Brian. The yeah. details, the small details yeah. that you remember. So <laughs> they, they had to take the bed back and reduce it to three by six. Wow. <laughs> and I mended it to the size of the room. That That's is, how small the room was. <laughs> yes. So that is the classical graphics I'm going to give how we started this journey 25 years ago. Amen. And 25 years down the line, God has blessed us. Amen. So there's nothing I have today that is mine. I call my wife Ukinebo. That's the name I gave her. But most people actually think that's her name. Hmm. I want to Ukinebo in Benin. It means my rising star. Hmm. She brought sunshine. She brought 
life into me. Her coming into my life brought all the things about life. Amen. So that foundation is solid. So nothing is going to shift it along the way. So, so you don't feel like there's no, this is mine, this is yours, or all that, uh, yes. nothing. So it's very key. And you can check with my wife and align on I All the years I worked, my wife was a public servant. She worked in federal civil service in Nigeria. One, not till today we speak. I never one day asked my wife what was her paycheck. My principle in life is that it is my glory to provide for my family. I am right. glad and I'm excited to provide for my family. And right. once I have that at the back of my mind, God will, will, God will provide me the resources because that is who I want to be. Hmm. All the things my wife has done in our home in 25 years are things she voluntarily did for us by herself. Hmm. I, don't, I don't give her a task. I don't give her a bill that this is yours to pay. Even we've been abroad now for close to three and a half years. That principle has not shifted because we left Nigeria. We are still who we are. Hmm. So the issue of finance, like I said, is a symptom of how do you see yourselves? Because hmm. marriage is about two living people coming together and they become, become dead. One. Hmm. And you can't be living and be one. So hmm. if you are married, your old self is dead. Two people become one. So you both died and one person started existing. So when you start thinking about this is my money, this is your money, then something is fundamentally wrong with the foundation. So I will want people to treat the, the essence of their coming together. If you treat the foundation, the issue of money becomes very, very easy to deal with. But hmm. once you don't treat that foundation, you see yourselves as partners. People see marriage as partnership. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not mm -hmm. partnership. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not for small boys or small girls. Mm -hmm. Just Somebody like is asking a question, Brother Ernest. Sorry to cut in. Yeah. Uh, a few people in the comment section have asked that you should please explain what you mean by the foundation. What do you mean? For young people who are not married yet, especially because this was requested, and these young people are not married yet, Gen Z. What do you, can you break it down? What do you mean by the foundation of the marriage? Okay. When you meet a, a woman, why are you choosing that this is the person you want to spend your life with? Mm -hmm. Because like, like Brother Peter said, God keeping both of you alive, you're going to be with this person for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Minimum. So you must be intentional of the person you want to bring into your space that you want mm -hmm. to spend the next 50 years for. So that will form the crucibles of who you want to commit your life with. Mm -hmm. So you must be deliberate in how you pick the person you want to tie yourself to. Uh -huh. That's what I mean by foundation. Uh -huh. You don't just wake up and you pick someone and you say, this is your partner. You must remember that this is not a partnership. It's a covenant you are entering with someone and it requires discipline. It requires commitment. So the key is, why are you getting married? Why? Why that's, are you tying yourself to this man or to this woman? Hmm. Why? Which is why I said, Marriage is about what you will see, not what you are seeing now. Because mm -hmm. what you are seeing now is ephemera. It's going to go away. You mm -hmm. can be a man with two cars. Chances are that it could become three or it becomes zero. Ben. It, ne it never remains the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that should form the basis of your foundation. What are your value systems? If I may bring it down a bit. Mm -hmm. What is the value system you have? Why are you picking Mr. A or Mrs. A as the person you have chosen to spend the rest of your life with is a commitment. It is something you should take a decision you are taking deliberately. That's what I mean by foundation. If the foundation is wrong, every other thing you're going to see that comes on top becomes cosmetic. It can never be repaired because the Bible says that if the foundation be broken, what can the righteous do? Absolutely nothing. The foundation is key. Once the foundation is right, every other thing will fall into place. Yes. Jo somebody called Joy said, how can you deal with intrusive and controlling in-laws in your marriage? Because one of the problems why marriages are also breaking up very quickly, for those of us from Nigerian background, African background, is the in-laws. In-laws in certain cultures are too involved in marriages. And I often think that in some cases, oh, we had this very huge debate a while ago here when this thing was trending on social media 
that your wife is not your family. I don't know if you heard about it. I think it's around the time that uh, Hakini or whatever that uh, footballer from Morocco, um, and that, that news came out that all his assets are with his mom and that the ex-wife cannot, they are divorcing and she cannot get anything because he doesn't own anything. And later we found out that it was not even true. That thing is just, is a, is, a, is a fake news. But a lot of Nigerians got on that debate and oh boy, it was hot. And you start seeing men saying like, my, 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 your wife is not your family. Your, I had a long conversation, fight with so many people on different platforms about this. My fa your family is your father, mother, and you know, your siblings, your wife is an outsider. They can leave you anytime. So this person called Joy is asking this question. How do you deal with that? Okay. Let, let's even look at it from the angle of people that are married. They are just getting married. What advice would you give them to ensure that in-laws doesn't become a problem that will separate? Because in-laws have broken a lot of marriages, so they have. Uh, ADB, it, it's quite interesting uh, uh, the way people see the concept, the concept of marriage. Uh, I'll go back to the foundation of marriage. God caused Adam to have a deep sleep and out of Adam, he created the woman. And when Adam woke up, that was a present, a gift that God gave to Adam. So the question is, even when you are taking your marital vows, he said, a man shall leave mm -hmm. his father and mm -hmm. mother mm -hmm. and cleave unto his wife. Yes. So, the person who does the living is the man. Yes. I've so, also wonder, wondered, Brother Ines, why did the Bible not say that a woman should live? Good. Because the woman is already part of the man. The woman came out of the man. Good answer. Wow. Wow. The woman, the is, woman is already part of the man. Very part of the man. Because God caused man to fall asleep. And he took one of the man's rib and he created the woman. Hmm. So he's the man that is supposed to live. Hmm. So, a man is supposed to take the blow, take the defense for the wife. When you see marriages where there are intrusiveness from either the father-in-law, the mother-in-law, the family people, the responsibility, it is the man that created that environment. Hmm. I have been married for 25 years. My siblings know that you don't cross the line when it comes to my wife. My mother. Yo, I still chai, have... chai, chai, Brian. As my body is with me as you are speaking, it's like I, I told you this before. I can listen well, to you all I, day. I can be. I have yeah. to make a comment to after Brian. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. By God's grace, I still have a father. I still have a mother. Wow. They know when it comes to my wife, don't go to that area. Because I defined it from day one of the man. Hey, hey, define it. Boundaries. Set it. Youngest. Hmm. But when you don't define it and you see your wife as a partner, this is what happens. And it's very interesting when I see men seeing their wife not being part of them as partners. And the question I ask men is, the day you took the marital vow, to sold off your life to, a, to your wife. That's the truth. Hmm. We are just being silly. We are just kidding when we think we still own ourselves. If you are not ready to die and give your life to, your, to, to another person, a woman, you call your wife. Don't get married. When you are married, you, you stop existing. You are dead. Because the question I ask is, how many of us come home and our wife, our wife presents food to us and we tell her, have a taste of the food before I eat. I made that example. I made this example in my last show about how people are hiding money and fighting over assets when you are eating food and sleeping on the same bed so, and you trust the person not to pay you before morning. So, so you see what we, you see how we how we deceive ourselves. The same woman you are talking about now, you just you returned from work last night. She presented food to you and you ate it with, with faith. That is faith. You just hmm. believe that is faith at play. You just believe that. This is my wife. She loves me. This food she's giving me. I it's not going to harm him. It's I not going to harm me. Good. I trust her. So if you have that level of trust, what is material resources that you can trust? Hey. 
Did I say this or I didn't say this? Did I say this or not when we were doing the last show and I was telling you people when I got emotional about, you know, all this fighting for property, fighting for money? God so that is essence of why I would say that intrusiveness that comes, I owe, I, I put the man that he is responsible. It is the environment you have created. Is the boundaries you did not set. Is how you have presented your wife to your family that she's not part of you, that she's your partner, that your family comes first before her. She comes first. Once you get married, your wife becomes number one. Pastor, shall I put it this way? You say your wife is you. Correct. You say your wife is you. It's not. She's not another person. You and your wife, you are you are the same person. Absolutely. Wow. So when, what you are saying in summary, Bra Ernest, is that once those boundaries, you set it from the one in your own case. And your family already understand that hmm, Auntie Gloria is a no-go area. If you try anything, brother will not be happy. They respected those boundaries that you set for 25 years and give her the honor and the respect she needs. So your sister-in-law or your sister will not come to America now or your mother, and you have to leave. Let's say most of the cases I've heard, they will say uh, that uh, the woman is sleeping in the in the sitting room because the mother-in-law is sleeping in the bedroom. Absolutely. I mean, I tell my, my siblings, I tell my mom that the level of love you showed my wife is a demonstration of the level of love you have for me. Hmm. Show how you love me, show it to my wife. You can't love me more than you love my wife. I will see the level of love you have for me with the level of love you have shown to my wife. It's usually the other way around, though. I see a lot of brothers on social media saying, if you love me, you will love my mother. If you love me, you will love my family. Absolutely. But turn it, turn it the, the table over, over body. That's not true. It's supposed to be the other way. If your mother truly loves you, he will show that love to your wife. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Brad Patrick, you wanted to say something about in-laws. Yeah, I quite agree with brother Ernest, but you know, however, I like being practical. Right. Be. So when it comes to the issue of in-laws, the husband and wife would have to make a decision. I'm going to give you a practical example. Yes, sir. If they give birth to child, my mother, the mother-in-law, is alive, the father's, uh, the, the man's mother is alive, the woman's mother is alive, they want to come, for example. Yes, for Mugo. You have to make a decision, how long is your mom staying? Mm -hmm. That's a very big issue, and B, and that has caused a lot of havoc in the Bodo in Bo. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. How long is your mom staying? Who is coming first? Is it your mom? When are they going to go? Auntie B, we just said this thing like that. It has caught, I'm going to give you an example. I have somebody that they started a big church in, I'm not going to mention the state in America, because of this issue, both of them are ordained pastor. Hmm. Auntie B, they are no more. Because hmm. it's whatever the mother, mother in law says, that is all hold up in their house. It's not a small issue. And the man puts his leg down. He said, "Not nobody can tell him anything except whatever his mother." Wants. Yes, yes. They are and we have had cases of even women saying, so, you know, it's only my mother." Yes. So let's let's balance everything. Mm -hmm. Like I said, both both partner must sit down and say, "He said, it might, it might be a very difficult decision." Yes, this is what we are going to agree from the onset. Yes. This is what we are going to have. This is not we are not going to tolerate. Yes, it must be said and finalized so that in, in, in later you can go back. This is what we agreed on. This is what we don't agree on. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Really, really appreciate. 